One week ago today was actually a very busy day for me and many other creators. It was the day the embargo for content creators lifted on the Outer Worlds. It was also the day Fallout First was added to Fallout 76. And for the following few days, those were the two main topics for good reason. But now one week later, as things have started to calm down, I actually want to go back to something else that was added in that update. One week ago, although Fallout First did come out, Bethesda actually just added patch 14 to Fallout 76 in general. And with patch 14 came a ton of information on Wastelanders, the up and coming DLC for this game. Wastelanders was initially set to come out in November of 2019, but it was just recently delayed until Q1 of 2020. Although it seems like a lot of the assets or things to go along with this were actually loaded into the Fallout 76 files. And even further, some things were actually put in game for players to access. And a pretty big disclaimer with this, I am not the original source on most of this content. It was data mine a variety of people are providing this information. I'll have some of the names and credits down below. So if you see those names, you know who they are, the people actually doing this work firsthand. But even further, just keep in mind as you're watching this video that a lot of this is still pretty far out. It technically isn't stuff that's meant to go live yet or meant to be accessed by the public. And considering Wastelanders is still several months away, it's all of course subject to some pretty major changes. We may just be seeing one of the first revisions of it. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over some of these future mechanics, features, and other things that we just found out about, and it's actually pretty interesting. I'm going to break this video up into two sections. First, I'll go over some of the just features, but then in the second half, I'm going to go over some potential spoilers, as we actually now know more about the Wastelander story than we did before, and a lot of it actually is pretty interesting, holding references to some of the past Fallout games. Well, starting things off, let's actually look at what you could find in game, what was actually added with this past update. If you go to roughly this location in the northeast corner, corner of Fault 76's map, you can actually find a cave, a cave that's always kind of been there, but now placed within that cave is a concrete wall and a keypad. If you put in a bunch of zeros in this keypad, it'll actually open the door, having that cool door unlock animation for some of those vault-esque doors, and behind that you can actually find a button in what looks like an elevator that does lead to Vault 79. Unfortunately, that's actually where this ends. As of right now, it doesn't seem like there's any next step with this process. If you try and click the button, nothing will happen. Happen. There technically actually is more world space associated with it. There is a Vault 79 door that is there, and if you use less than official means, you can get to it, but that's literally it. It's just the vault door. There's no vault that you could currently enter into, but this does confirm, obviously, that Vault 79 is coming with Wastelanders, something we kind of knew about from some of the teaser images, but now you could actually see its location in game. Although, one of the other things we actually did get added into this game are a plethora of new ammo types. We saw in the Wastelanders trailer that a bow and arrow will get added with this new DLC. And it seems like Bethesda is taking full advantage of that, giving you a lot of cool and unique arrows you could fire from it. So you could see a poison arrow, a plasma arrow, a grenade arrow, a flaming arrow, a firework arrow, and finally a cryo arrow. All of that is pretty cool. It'll likely function pretty similarly to how it works in the Fallout 4 mod you could download right now. If Bethesda even gets close to what these Fallout modders have achieved, this is a blast to use in game. It's very satisfying. It's very unique and different compared to a lot of other weapons. And with all these additional arrow types, it actually should be a pretty cool one. Although one of the other things that was interestingly added is actually the Grafton Pawn Shop. This is going to be a new in-game location. As we'll discuss later in this video, it seems like there's going to be a lot of notes and critical lore and story information that you find here. Again, I'll go over the spoilery stuff later on, but it seems like at least partially this will take us to Grafton and it will be a core location managed by a specific new faction. Although something pretty interesting that we'll go along with this, it is described how in order to actually enter the Grafton Pawn Shop, you're going to have to leave your team. So now, of course, this is all data mined, so you have to kind of take it with a grain of salt to some degree, but that is an interesting mechanic. If perhaps doing some of these quests will almost require you to be alone, we could also see there's going to be some new updates to Rose's Raider Radio, that being the top of the world radio you could find in Fallout 76 right now. She'll have some new dialogue with this, actually calling people to the area in search of this treasure. I'll talk more about how the treasure fits into the larger story later in the spoiler part of this video. I wouldn't really consider it a spoiler yet because in the past Bethesda has quite literally revealed that that is going to be one of the main focuses of this questline, some kind of secret treasure, although now we may actually know what the treasure is and how this treasure is really a big part of what's seemingly drawing some of the people to this area. Similar to this, there's a couple of lines of new Zack's dialogue that will be implemented in Nuclear Winter. He'll say things like new humans have been detected 
expected in Appalachia, perhaps some promising overseer candidates, where the conflict among the new settlers of Appalachia is the perfect premise for continued testing. New residents of Appalachia mean new potential overseers, stay on your toes candidates. The way this is described, it certainly seems like it'll actually be a part of nuclear winter. And the reason that's interesting is it could suggest that similar to new NPCs getting added to the traditional adventure mode, perhaps we also see an update to nuclear winter adding new enemy NPCs that spawn along some of the creatures. At this point, that's pure speculation. We don't know if that's how this will actually function, but based off some of these voice lines and of course the larger theme of this DLC, that would kind of make a lot of sense. It would be interesting as they could potentially be actual ranged NPCs, which there really isn't a ton of in nuclear winter. Outside of that, a couple of the new items we do see get added are actually a secret service earpiece and badge. In the past, we've seen the secret service power armor and we actually got an update around that also adding in a new jetpack. This stuff is pretty interesting to me. We know from the trailers that although it doesn't have the paint job in this video, this is actually the secret service power armor. What role this faction, if you even want to call it that, will play is still a total mystery. But as they get more and more new content, it certainly makes it seem like they will have a considerable presence. Is the secret service just a subsidiary or part of the enclave? They obviously have a pretty big presence in Fallout 76. Or is this something new and unrelated? Do we only find pieces of their armor or do you actually meet somebody who's a member of this faction? Is it one of the other minor factions that has been mentioned? But speaking of factions, we also see some new stuff around the faction reputation system that's also coming with this DLC. So two of the first things we see are logos for the settlers and the raiders. The settlers logo actually looks like it has a very heavy focus on rebuilding or just construction in general. So I wouldn't be shocked if maybe if you aligned with that faction that is a major part of their quest line, kind of similar to the Minutemen in Fallout 4. Technically that was a theme in Fallout 76, even just the base game, although it was never really put into practice. You were supposed to rebuild Appalachia, but everything's exactly the same as the day you bought the game. Although of course now there are things like subscription service, non-cosmetic microtransactions, a battle royale mode. But then with the Raider faction logo, it's pretty typical. It doesn't really seem to indicate much one way or the other. Although outside of that, one other feature that is coming with these is it's actually going to pop up on your social menu, which faction you're aligned with. We could also see a variety of different faction reputation symbols. So with these, you could see a nice range of an enemy to the faction to super agreeable with that faction. It's not totally clear how exactly this will work, but it seems like this will be represented to other people. So while you're playing and online, they could click on your profile and see what you're doing or how you aligned. And it will be curious to see if that does have larger social implications. Like if maybe you align strongly with these settlers, you actually get certain things like some kind of faction combat or PVP system. There's nothing quite yet to really indicate that, but that would be a pretty cool addition. And it's something that Bethesda has kind of nodded at all the way back from before the game released. And pretty clearly it is a major request. Let's just hope it's not a Fallout first exclusive. So that's a pretty good look at all the new content that just got added that isn't spoilery. But next up, we're going to go into some stuff that does involve new factions as well as part of the story, at least initially, with Fallout 76's Wastelanders DLC. To me, this doesn't really seem like major spoilers. It seems like it's more kind of surface level stuff or things you find out pretty early on in this quest line. But nonetheless, if you want to stay pure until this does come out, I would suggest clicking off the video now, maybe just leave a like before you go. Either way, it seems like with Fallout 76's Wastelanders, one of the major new factions that we probably don't get to meet, but we hear a lot about, is the Vigilant Citizens. It seems like this faction will have a major focus at the Grafton Pawn Shop. Added with the most recent update are a plethora of notes that allows you to actually get a lot of context around this story. So basically, the Vigilant Citizens were a bunch of people before the Great War that were investigating something suspicious, the treasure of Appalachia. There's a lot of sketchy stuff going on in the area, and they started going through newspaper clippings, interviewing people, trying to find out what exactly was going on. But in the process of doing so, it seems like they were picked off one by one by some kind of government body. This could be where the Secret Service does take a role. Most of the people in this faction were members of the West Virginian labor force or even union workers from the area, and basically they started discovering weird things. Some massive and major concrete orders that weren't 
going to Vault 76. They weren't totally clear as to where it was going, but it all looked very suspicious. Making a bunch of discoveries in this regard, they start to try and reach out to a bunch of local prominent figures. These are people that you've heard about in the existing Fallout 76 story. People like Van Lowe, which you heard about with the Sheep Squatch questline, and then also Blackwell, who was a major part of the Enclave questline in the base game. Although one of the biggest discoveries, and this seems like it's going to be part of the cornerstone of this questline initially, you could read notes about a report of a large crime committed by some kind of Chinese spy named Shanghai Sally. In Las Vegas, she actually robbed the Ultra Lux and Lucky 38. You might remember both of those were casinos in Fallout New Vegas, so it's a nice little throwback. She stole $20 million and managed to get away with it. There are reports that she was actually taken down as the government and authorities eventually caught up with her and it seemed pretty concrete. The government reported it was some kind of Chinese spy and the situation was handled. But back in Appalachia, some of the citizens started to see pictures of this apparent Chinese spy, they realized, hey, she actually looks really familiar, and in fact was a member of their own community, and apparently a member of the US Army. And despite many people remembering her, there were no official records of her existence. So it seems like what happened was they actually got this $20 million from this robbery, it was somehow associated with the government who ended up covering up who exactly stole it, and then they stashed that money somewhere. Based off the teaser images for Fallout 76's Wastelanders DLC, having all this gold coming out of Vault 79, you have to assume the money is stashed in Vault 79. It would also explain the secret project involving all of this concrete, and seemingly that's what we'll actually be doing as this DLC does come out. And also kind of cool, some of these notes actually also come from the pit from Fallout 3's DLC. I'll have links to all of the notes that were added in the description down below. Many of them are now on the Fallout wiki. But something else to go along with this that does seem pretty cool, it doesn't seem like you'll have to wait all the way to Wastelanders release to get a peek or a preview at this one. If you guys remember back before the nuclear winter mode dropped, there were some teases in game, a few mysterious hollow tapes that were added, and it looks like based off some of the data mine files, they're planning something similar with Wastelanders. It looks like there's going to be some kind of pre-Wastelanders DLC. You can find a bunch of map fragments in game, and when you put them together, it should lead you to a quest that will actually introduce you to Vault 79. It'll probably be fairly basic and short, similar to what we had last time, but again, another kind of cool way to tease an upcoming update. And yeah, frankly, that's just about everything. If you actually want to read through some of those notes, you can get additional details. I'd try to just keep it need to know or give you the big picture stuff in this video. I could probably spend 20 minutes talking about all the little details added with those notes, some of the new locations, new characters. And yeah, that is a look or a preview at everything we know right now about Wastelanders, or at least all of the new leaked information to come with this past Fallout 76 update. I think it'll be kind of interesting or curious to see what happens with Wastelanders. For a while, it was really looking like Fallout 76 was going to make that turnaround. It would finally go back to some of its roots with the single player Fallout experience, but then we get a subscription service with Fallout First. That kind of soured things, and I wonder how it'll affect the reception of this eventual DLC. Either way, as always again, I thank you for watching. Hopefully you found this video informative, but until next time, I hope to see you all later.